What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Churchosity Podcast. My name is Heath Brady. And I'm Andrea Brady. And we are your Churchosity Podcast personnel. Indeed. (laughs) Coming at (laughs) you. No. (laughs) Yes, one more time. (laughs) How you doing, Andy? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastical. (laughs) I don't even know if that's a word. I may have just made it up. I like it. It should be in the Webster's Dictionary. (laughs) Seriously, though, how you doing? I'm good. Not much is new. Had a good holiday. Yeah. Had a good Christmas. Was relaxing. Uh, we had a little ice storm. Yeah. And uh, our daughter came and visited and got to stay an extra day because of it. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, indeed. And uh, yeah, it kept us home and focused on each other and in a good way. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was, melted within a day, so you know we weren't at each other's throats. It's true. No cabin fever. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I uh, I'm curious to know how the how all of our listeners in their parts of the country fared during that crazy uh, cold front that came down from Canada. Yeah, that was bizarre, man. I think it messed up Christmas for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. My heart goes out to all them folks that. Uh, Got screwed over by Southwest Airlines. Oh, that was that was a terrible thing to see, man. Yeah, it, it you know you know what it made me think of what? Like I've seen far too many movies. It's obvious because <laughs> when I'm when I'm watching like videos on TikTok and videos on YouTube and things that people were sharing on Instagram and Facebook during that whole fiasco of christmas eve christmas day and all of the flights being canceled and everything it was like it was like something out of that movie world war z with brad pitt i mean Mm. not because of zombies let me clarify (laughs) but because like because like the airports they looked they looked just like in such chaos it was so nuts like i remember seeing this picture Somebody had finally, they posted it on their Instagram. They had finally reached their destination in Colorado Mm -hmm. and they were down in baggage claim looking for their luggage. Oh. And it was like, it it was, it it, it reminded me of like going to the dump and there's just debris all (laughs) over the place. Yeah. Because there were just mounds and mounds and piles and rows of luggage. Oh no. And the caption read, I feel sorry for all of these people. Yeah. And That's then, really and then awful. I read. Well, I read some of the comments, and that was because their luggage had reached Colorado, but they were not in Colorado themselves. Oh. They were stuck somewhere, and that mm. was like one of the craziest things about that whole meltdown with the airlines was that people couldn't get on their planes, but the flights were still leaving, and the and the luggage was getting somewhere. Oh my gosh! It's insane. That's really awful. It was insane. Yeah. But supposedly. Uh, everything is supposed to be back to normal tomorrow, mm, according to what I read. So, mm-hmm. I'm almost convinced that if you have to travel to see relatives, it would probably be best to travel the week after Christmas. Right? I mean, I know celebrating on Christmas is a big deal and a lot of people like those traditions, but I don't know. It just seems like a lot of stress. Yeah. Well, like our family because of where I worked, uh, as I like to say, in a previous life. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, The company that I worked for shut down at Christmas. Mm. And and Andy, the company that you worked for, uh, Mm -hmm. their office was closed the week after Christmas as well. That's right. So between the two of us and all of the kids being out of school for two weeks, you and I and the kids used to traditionally go on vacation the day after Christmas. Right. And watching all of that chaos and confusion, I was just like, number one, <laughs> we really lucked out weather-wise in all the years that we traveled during this time of year. That's true. Because th- remember, there was one year where we traveled and it snowed on Christmas. Mm-hmm. And we had a shuttle picking us up the next morning and we were like, oh man, I hope that uh, this, <laughs> this, let, this lets up so we can get out of here. Yeah, I remember. But I was thinking along the same lines, like... The holidays are stressful enough. Mm. How much more stress are we adding to that by traveling, you know, before Christmas, Mm -hmm. you know, to get to somewhere 
especially by way of airplane, <laughs> you know, the before Christmas. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I was thinking the same thing. Like, you know, I know that Christmas is on December 25th, but um, yeah, everybody and their mother was, was traveling this year. It was really insane, yeah. you know? So yeah, I was Wild. thinking along the same lines. Mm -hmm. And you know, along those same lines, we want to continue our conversation about, you know, why the holidays are stressful and, <laughs> and rough for some people. Yeah. But before we do, we want to remind all of you that if you want to support us here at Churchosity, it's really simple. All you have to do is follow us on the socials. Facebook or Instagram, look for us at the tag at Churchosity Pod. And if you really love our episode, you can share it with all your friends. You just got to send the leak to your friends and let them know just how much they are going to love Churchosity too. And we know they will. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, um, as we're recording this episode right now, it is almost 2023. Yep. We are recording on New Year's Eve of 2022. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't want to do one of those episodes. We don't want to have one of those conversations that's kind of cliche and typical where we look back on the year and talk about our high points and our low points and what we're looking forward to in the new year. Those are fun, though. They are. I know. I understand. <laughs> I, I really, really do. But, you know, with the new year, mm -hmm. there does come this sense of doing something new oh yeah totally you know we like to make resolutions in our culture that mm -hmm. we fail within the first week all the time <laughs> we like to make promises to ourselves promises <sighs> to our families you know yeah. all of that stuff is fine and well i mean i don't there's no harm in that i guess i mean i'm gonna try to lose weight in 2023 mm -hmm. you know and the holidays always Seem to remind me of, yeah, well, this year I really should probably get on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ate too many cookies oh, this year. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Maybe, it's, I think, some candy, too, though. Well, it's not sitting well. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and being locked inside for 48 hours because of the ice all over the place that, yeah. you know, when you're trying to find something to eat, um, those those chocolates that are tucked up in that cupboard, um, they become dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking and soul searching over the last couple of weeks that, that we've taken some time to ourselves and just thinking about, you know, the holiday time. Cause, cause like for me, the role that I'm in at church, I was busy the week of Christmas. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. Yeah. You know, we had four Christmas Eve services and then a Christmas day service in the morning. And, you know, it was, it was really, really cool. Um, to be, you know, working for lack of a better term, but, but serving the church body four times on Christmas Eve and then a fifth time on Christmas day. Mm -hmm. And you know, the day after Christmas, when I could take a breath, <laughs> it, it just kind of, that's when it all just kind of, kind of hit me all at once that, you know, Christmas is stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, be. as Christians, we want to focus on the birth of our savior and, you know, during the Advent season, we want to talk about the preparation and anticipation of, of, of Christ coming to us. And, and then it gets here. But like the process of all of that, you know, depending on who you are and what your situations might be, it can be, it can be an anxious time. Yeah. And I was so happy that this year at church, um, the week of Christmas we had a blue christmas service mm -hmm. called the longest night because mm. it was on december 21st mm -hmm. which is the longest night of the year oh that's clever and the focus of that service was for people who are just going through it you know mm. they're just going through it this year there's 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 some level of grief some level of anxiety some something that that when it when the holiday season comes around, it triggers, you know, some some bad stuff in mm -hmm. your heart and in your mind, right? Mm. You know, thinking about people who've lost loved ones, uh, yeah. people who are having strained relationships with their spouses, uh, folks who have 
distance between them when it comes to relatives, you know, parents, mm-hmm. children, cousins, whatever it might be, you know, and, and let's be honest, you know, even, even though we've for all intents and purposes come out of the pandemic, there's still, you know, some repercussions from the pandemic era mm-hmm. that we're reminded of at Christmas time. And so it was just really neat to to offer an opportunity to folks in our church and in our and in our community to come and just be with others that are going through it as well mm-hmm. and find comfort and grace and peace in the preparation for the coming of their Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just a really neat time. That's cool. And, and I think that, that that's something that we not only forget exists in the Christian walk, that on this side of eternity, there's letdown and there's pain and there's agony and that the holidays tend to trigger those feelings a little bit. They hit a little bit harder, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But I also think that that we forget that there needs to be a space for that. Mm-hmm. You know, grief is very much a part of life. Right. Because we're mortal. Mm-hmm. And I, we I, have needs and there's things that hurt. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you're going through it, it's nice to have community surrounding you um, and looking out and seeing other people that um, have their own set of issues, but, you know, that are going through it also in some way. Right. Um, that you're not alone in that. It just, it's, there's some comfort in that, I guess. Yeah, 100%. Um, we talked a lot about that on our previous episode about creating community. Mm-hmm. You know, that we're created for community. And and while this time of year, depending on what, what our situation is and where we're at in that situation, there may be division, mm-hmm. that, you know, between ourselves and other people. And... On the one hand, there needs to be space to be able to go through that. But on the other hand, there needs to be this this understanding that we are, in fact, created for community. Right. And and if it's not safe to be in community with the people that you're apart from, then it's a really great blessing to have a space to be in community with other Christians mm-hmm. who are going through their own thing. Yeah. You know, So it was really neat. Christmas week was really, really cool. So... You know, what what I thought we would talk about on this episode is kind of piggybacking on on those thoughts and ideas from our last episode, but kind of looking at looking forward to the new year. Mm-hmm. You know, things things that we want to do differently, things that new things that we want to try. Yeah. Ways that we might be unreasonable um, <laughs> in Step choices. outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. 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 Um you know, like I got to preach for the first time in our church mm. on the 18th of December. Mm-hmm. And it was really, really exciting. And, you know, that was a pretty unreasonable thing for me because I haven't preached in a while. And it was the first time in, in our church. And, you know, there's that nervousness and yeah. and anxiety and everything. But but one of the things that, that I alluded to in my sermon uh, was that, you know, I have these five pillars in my life, five men throughout the course of my life that... I would consider to be pillars Mm -hmm. because of their commitment to me and making me a good human, so to speak. And one of those men was my childhood football coach. His name was Bob Cooper. And he used to, he used to say a lot of really powerful things. And one of the, one of those things that he said to me once was, I'm asking you to play football outside of your comfort zone because Mm. that's where the real magic happens yeah and you know a lot of times um to come out of a period of grief to come out of a period of separation to come out of a period of anxiety or anger or what or frustration or whatever those things are Mm -hmm. that contribute to the quote blue christmas of our lives it's unreasonable. It's outside of our comfort zone, but that really is where the magic happens. That's true. So 
I kind of wanted to kick off the conversation with a scripture. It's actually my favorite. I, I know I say this all the time, but this literally <laughs> is my favorite scripture verse in the Bible. Oh. Um, it's Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And I, I didn't know it at the time. I memorized this verse in July of 1988 while on a youth mission trip to Mexico. And it's kind of funny because... Um, this and along with about 10 other scripture references are what all of us needed to memorize in order to be able to go to Disneyland at the end of the mission trip. Wow, that's some motivation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, bribery, there, there's, there's nothing wrong with bribing a kid with rewarding them and rewarding them for memorizing scripture, especially when those verses take root, because I actually know all of those verses still to this day by heart. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah. this one is my favorite because the very idea of what Paul is saying in these verses is very unreasonable. Hmm, okay. It kicks off like this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. See, unreasonable, right out of the gate. <laughs> we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials, right. when we encounter various trials. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Mm. And endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope in salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Hmm. So there's, the, there's this progression that Paul goes through in those verses, but what holds that progression together is the very last point that he makes, that God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Mm -hmm. And and again, referencing the sermon that I preached on the 18th, it was all about it was all about having Christ in our love, about having Christ's love in our love. Mm -hmm. And and here in this in this verse in Romans, Paul says that God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Right. Because having the love of Christ is being unreasonable. Mm -hmm. because it's not our human finite love. <laughs> the love of Christ that the Holy Spirit fills our hearts with mm -hmm. is a selfless love. Mm -hmm. You know, we read about what that looks like in 1 Corinthians 13, that love is patient and love is kind. It is not envious, does not boast, etc. Right, right? And we need Christ in order to be able to do that. Well, yeah. We, <laughs> it doesn't come natural. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and Christ is the only person in all of time that can perfectly do mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm. Because let's be honest, Andy. Yeah. Christ's love is not emotions or feelings. Christ's love is actions. Mm. That love is being patient. That love is being kind, right. etc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not, you know, warm and fuzzy feelings. Although those are byproducts. Those emotions and feelings and whatnot are byproducts of being in a relationship with another person who's who is loving in these in that way mm -hmm. i mean think just think about it for once for just a second it, when you're in a relationship with someone who is patient doesn't that make you want to be around that person more yeah or kind yeah you know like man they are really kind people i want to hang out with them more it's true see that that feeling is a is a is a response that feeling is uh, a consequence, if you will, of the action of love, being kind mm. or patient, etc. cetera, right? right? It's attractional. Very. Good word. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so when, when I think about this time of year that has the highest level of triggers of animosity, angst, etc., because, mm -hmm. you know, the holidays are tough times for people. I think about this verse and how Paul tells us that essentially these moments of stress, these moments of grief, these moments of anxiety, they're good for us. Hmm. And the reason why they're good for us is because they help develop the strength of our character. Yeah. In other words, because of what I've gone through and the holidays tend to remind me of what I have gone through, I'm going to be a better man 
on the back end of this situation because this situation and the triggering memories of this situation are strengthening my character. Right. Well, and for me, I think it also it strengthens my character because it reminds me that I need to rely on the Lord more. Mm. That'll preach. Focusing on, on Him and finding strength in Him and, you know, seeking Him because we need Him. Sometimes we really, really need him to get through things. And, you know, we can't find that strength in ourselves. Well, I would argue that try, that we do try to find that strength in ourselves. And, and that's the, those are those moments when we realize that we can't do it. Yeah. You know, I can't love a person that's acting unlovingly towards me without the strength of the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, it's, it's just, that's, that's almost, I would say that's nearly impossible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Andy. Yes. What kind of, what kind of thoughts come to mind as we approach this new year, this uh, global reset of time, if you will, where everybody in the world in one capacity or another is thinking about what, what new thing am I going to do or do differently or do in replace of next year? You know, as, as, as a Christian, you know, going through the holiday season that is dealing with, you know, negative stuff in their lives mm. during this time and mm-hmm. going into the new year, what kind of thoughts come to mind for you, for, for our listeners? Well, I think, you know, we want to have hope for the new year that it's going to be better than the, ne- than the last year. Um, right. I mean, we always hope for that and... The year is always uncertain. You never know what's going to happen, but the Lord knows. And so we just have to continue to put our trust and our faith in him, no matter what happens. Um, but seeking him and what he has, you know, for what his will is for us, examining ourselves, you know, maybe I didn't do so well this year. Maybe I, you know, had these plans and ideas of being a, a better Christian, you know, quote unquote, you know, better, I'm going to read my Bible every day or whatever you might come up with to try to be better. But really, you know, seeking Jesus every day of our lives is not easy sometimes. And um, I think for myself, when I think about the new year, I want to put Christ first every day Mm. and it doesn't have to be complicated whatever that looks like you know seeking him first every day right um that's good stuff stuff. sometimes we just complicate things and it doesn't have to be difficult Mm. i think that one of the way you really bring up bring up a good point about that, that we complicate it and i think one of the ways that we complicate it most is that we forget we live under grace you know, when we, when we talk about grace as it pertains to ourselves as Christians, we more often than not think of that transaction of grace that God has shown us, Yeah. you know, by, by saving us, you know, by giving us something that we don't deserve, mm-hmm. which is eternal life, right? Through Christ's death on the cross, you know, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it's by grace you have been saved correct right when we think about grace on the human level and bestowing that upon another person that is the context that we tend to relate to when we talk about transactional grace between humans that we show other people grace Mm -hmm. we forget that applying grace to one's life is also necessary for ourselves right that we need to give ourselves (laughs) grace yeah and a lot of us, you know, and, and I, might, I might hit a nerve here with some listeners. And you know what? That's fine. Write me some hate mail. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. But seriously, though, cut yourself some slack. Because on this side of eternity, you're not going to have it all figured out. Mm-hmm. And to you and I and every other Christian that's listening right now, we're not perfect. That's why God's grace is so beautiful. 
Yeah. Not that it permits us, as Paul says, what, should we send up a storm so that grace may abound? May it never be. Right. You know, we don't live under grace so that we can do, so that we can go all crazy. Right. <laughs> That's a different podcast. <laughs> right. No, we live under grace because it's been afforded to us. Mm-hmm. So that we try not to take ourselves so seriously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a lot of us as Christians, especially us Gen Xers in the church, you know, we come out of an era where there was so much legalism, Mm. albeit bondage in, Mm -hmm. in our faith statements and praxis. Even though, even depending on where, if you're listening right now, depending on where you grew up in church or where you went to church or where you're currently going to church, to some degree or another, there's this aspect that, yeah, we're saved by grace, but I got to do X, Y, Z. Works. And, And not even necessarily works, but more along the lines of, you know, this is what our doctrine is. Oh, I see. And I got to stick to that doctrine. I got to be rigid on that doctrine, you know, depending on what, you know, my biblical worldview is on this subject or this cultural norm or this social disturbance or whatever it might be. And you draw a hard line. And yet there's emptiness in that Mm. because you're having to meet some man-made requirement. (laughs) And we're never, we're never, only Jesus can do that. Right. Right. So I love that point that you made about, you know, not taking yourself so seriously and, you know, giving yourself room to breathe because you also live under grace, Mm -hmm. afford yourself some grace, Mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, if, if, if you're an adult child of a parent, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak to some folks right now, if that's okay. All right. Is that all right? What, yeah, yeah. If you're an adult child who right now is estranged from your parents, for whatever reason, I'm not going to say it's one person's fault or the other person's fault. For whatever reason, you are not on good terms with your parents right now. And you're wrestling especially around the holidays, you're wrestling with that division. Should I reach out to them? Should I not reach out to them? Why haven't they reached out to me? You know, you know how those conversations go. (laughs) Yeah. Give yourself some grace. Mm -hmm. Because if if that's you, both you and that parent are working it out. They're working it out. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, believe that one day the shed blood of Jesus Christ will cover that situation and it will have its perfect ending. Right. You know, that's that, that's that's the confidence that we have as believers that that we have that blessed hope that reconciliation can take place. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I don't want to drift off into the weeds too far about that, but you know, maybe you're the parent who is estranged from one of your children right now. Same, same type of deal, right? You know, I know that we as parents, especially us Gen X parents, we are so hard on ourselves. Yeah, we are. You know, that, that when our kids, you know, they grow up and, you know, they make bad choices. We look at, we, we, we look back on the inventory of our life of parenting and like where did I go wrong? You know, I wanted I wanted my kids to have a better life than I did. You know those conversations, yeah. right? Um, give yourself some grace because there's no such thing as the perfect mom, the perfect dad, the perfect son, the perfect daughter, the perfect husband, the perfect wife, etc. We like to think that we married the perfect person, but we didn't. What? <laughs> And kick your butt. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you need to give me some grace right now. Nope, no grace, <laughs> uncalled for. <laughs> and we kid and we poke fun, but but the reality is that life is tough sometimes. Yeah. And the holidays remind us, I think, more often than any other time of the year. Right. And as we said in our last episode, relationships should matter. The other 364 days of the year, not just, you know, because it's the holiday time and you're feeling 
you know, nostalgic or lonely or what have you. You have all these other days of the year to to work on relationship. Yeah. And uh, hey, it's the new year. What do you know? What do you know? <laughs> so, you know, s- something new that you can do unreasonably, mm-hmm. some way that you can get outside of your comfort zone in the new year is to seek the Lord's wisdom, mm-hmm. the guidance of the Holy Spirit on how you can do, as scripture says, all that is within you to be at peace with all men. Amen. I, I know for me that one day when I stand before God, I would really be happy knowing that in the presence of God, literally in the presence of God, that I have done everything possible on this side of eternity to fulfill that responsibility as a believer, that I've done everything I possibly can to contribute to peaceful relationships with other people. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's heavy. I mean, it really, really is. Because we, we can reach that point where we're like, you know what, I'm not doing anymore. I'm done. You know, giving ultimatums and, <laughs> and things like that. And like, mm-hmm. we get that. You know, yeah. like we really do. Because, you know, sometimes you have to make boundaries. You know, at the risk of this turning into a relationship counseling episode, uh, we know all too well how hard it can be in relationship with other people sometimes when you have to kind of make a boundary. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a difference between a boundary and a wall. I'm just saying. That's true. Because if there's a boundary, you can still see through or over it. If you catch my drift. Yeah. Well, and I think also when you create a a boundary with someone, they need to know what the boundary is. I don't think that it's fair to put up boundaries and then expect people to read your mind. You know, I mean, I'm speaking from experience here. I've made mistakes and I've had that happen to me, too, where someone, you know, would get mad because I violated a boundary that I wasn't aware of what that might be. Or you didn't know there was a boundary to begin with. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a respecter of boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that requires communication. Right. And that's part of that showing grace to one another. Mm-hmm. You know, I love you enough to tell you. Oh, oh here we go. Matthew 18. <laughs> I, love it, I love you enough to tell you, to come to you in private and say, hey, um, there's this thing between us. Mm-hmm. And we need to work it out. And we need to reconcile. And depending on how serious the offense was... Part of that conversation is, okay, so to make sure that you don't do this thing to me again, I'm going to put this little boundary right here that mm-hmm. you can't, you can't do this to me anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's, and the onus is on that other person to respect that boundary. Right. Right. That's part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Conversation is not storming out of the room jumping in the car, blocking them on all social media, blocking their (laughs) phone number, blocking their email address, and driving off into the sunset and talking crap about the person for the rest of your life. (laughs) All while maintaining, I'm not going to talk to them ever again until they apologize. Yeah. Well, how are they supposed to get a hold of you? Oh, yeah. Well, there's that. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a little dramatic. It's a little drastic. But, you know, some of our listeners may be in that kind of a place right now. That's true. Where they are either recipients of that kind of behavior or they're currently involved in that kind of behavior. Hmm. As Christians, we have to remember that we live under grace and we need to give ourselves all kinds of grace. Mm-hmm. I think that we also need to kind of shift our focus away from the things that are bad, the things that have gone wrong, the relationships that have failed, which is hard. I get it. But, you know, I'm a movie guy. Like I said, I've seen way too many movies. But if you've ever seen the movie Apollo 13. Oh, yes. One of my favorite scenes in the entire movie is when... They're at NASA and they're in this back meeting room and there's all of these, you know, smart people with PhDs and whatnot, basically telling the director of NASA that there's no way they can get the astronauts home because everything on the ship is broken and blah, 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 blah. 
And out of nowhere, the NASA director says, well, what else on, what's left on the ship that's good? <laughs> right. And sometimes in life, we, we should shift gears. We should shift our focus. Yeah, there's this thing and it sucks. And you know what? The holidays really, really remind me about that. But what in my life right now isn't broken? Mm-hmm. What in my life right now is a blessing from God? Mm-hmm. And shift gears. You know, mm. the, way, the ways that we are blessed. Think about those things and be grateful for them. Right. Changing your perspective. Maybe. Changing your perspective. Yeah. And I think that in Roman, those verses in Romans 5, I think that that's what Paul is alluding to when he says that we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. Mm. Because they remind us of the things in our lives that aren't broken as well. Mm-hmm. There's another verse some other verses in the book of James kind of speak along these same lines. James chapter 1 beginning in verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Oh, love, is, <laughs> love is patient, right? The testing of your faith. You know, this this trial that I'm going through or this trial that I went through that the holidays remind me of. Mm. It's a test. You know, how much faith do you really have mm. that everything's going to be okay? The testing of your faith, it produces patience. But catch this. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Whoa. <laughs> So you mean to tell me that the road to being perfect and lacking in nothing goes through problems and trials? Yeah, I guess. Ah. (laughs) Think about it from the vantage point of somebody who is... Think about this through the lens of or from the vantage point of someone who, who wants to lose weight. Okay. You don't just wake up tomorrow and you're skinny. You got to put yourself through the ringer to a certain degree, right? Yeah. It involves changing your nutrition. I mean, let's just get real. You got to eat differently to lose weight. Mm -hmm. For a lot of us, and I'm speaking for myself here, it isn't just changing the way I eat. It's changing the things that I do, Mm. i.e. going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you're at on your journey... Uh, just merely getting in the car to go to the gym is painful, <laughs> is a trial. It's a workout. It's a workout just to get to the driveway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting to the gym, walking into the gym, getting up on the treadmill, the, the, the elliptical, whatever it might be there, there's trial, there's pain, there's, there's hard work. That requires perseverance. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But that patience, that perseverance, it has its result that that you are perfect, lacking in nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, if if I if I am overweight, and I'm speaking like (laughs) transparently here, if I am overweight and I want to be healthy, I've got to go through fire to get there. And that trip through the fire has its result. That I am, you know not lacking in the health department. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a clumsy analogy, but 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 I think that it really speaks to those verses in James that mm-hmm. that that you know in that the testing of our faith it produces patience and the more patient we become, the byproduct of patience, the perfect work of patience is that we are perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And and I don't know about you Andy, but mm-hmm. when it comes to the woes and the griefs and the cares and concerns of my life and the ways that the holidays like trigger those things. Mm-hmm. I don't, I want to be lacking in nothing with those things. Right. I want to get to the point in my life where when those memories are triggered or even if it's a new situation and I'm just like going through the, the emotion, the emotional woe is means about it at the holiday time. I, I, for me, I would love to get to the point one day where I can go, yeah, that's a thing, and it happened. 
Yeah. But I have this, and I have this, and I have this, and the Lord has blessed me. You know, mm-hmm. that's that that shift in perspective right. that we talked about. And finding joy in your in the moment and being present where you're at. You know. Oh, it's so true. Mm, mm-hmm. Talk more about that. <laughs> Well, you know, we talked about that before with that, my story with me and my dad, but, um, and how, you know, he felt disappointment at the holidays and retreated into his own little world and left my mother high and I high and dry. Um, he wasn't emotionally present for us during the holidays because he was so hurt and disappointed by a different situation Um, and I think that we need to be thankful and grateful for what's right in front of us and for the people that we have in our life that are supportive and loving and we shouldn't we have to make sure we don't neglect them um, because we're focused on something else that's outside of our control that's painful and sad Um, but being present and changing our perspective to focus on those that are here for us what we do have like you were saying what's not broken Mm. and finding joy in that and being thankful to the Lord for that and clinging to that I mean that could be just what gives you the healing and hope that you need to move forward right and I would add that being present to what's right in front of you might just be you yeah you and Jesus well it might just be (laughs) it might just be you Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is that we can't neglect our own well-being you know what I mean yeah like we got to take care of ourselves too And that's part of creating that space where we afford ourselves some grace. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we're to blame for the situation, you know, we can't sit and beat ourselves up. On the flip side of that, we can't be, we can't continue to choose to be focused on what's not there and neglect our own well being at the same time. Right. You know, we have, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm all worldly and everything, but to a certain degree, we have to give ourselves some love. You know, we have to give ourselves some care, you know, and that's, you know, I I think about, I mean, there's, there's times in my life where I've really battled some depression and, and when you're going through that, that season, it's very, very hard to find the silver lining to find the things on the ship that are still good Mm. even if it's just you you know i like to say sometimes that even the very next breath that you're about to take is is god's grace because all of life is grace right and and if and if and, and i don't mean to sound flippant and i don't mean to sound crass and i don't mean to sound basic but if that's all that we can remember in the moment that's good is that i'm still breathing Yep. It's better than the alternative. Mm-hmm. Right? Way better. Right? And it's just a matter of perspective. You know, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't have all the answers. Mm-mm. This isn't, you know, a promo for depression <laughs> therapy in any way. No. But what I am saying is, is that scripture, just these two passages that I've read from in Romans and in James, mm-hmm. they tell us that the trials that we go through the testing of our faith that we go through, the problems that we go through, the things that we face that that are antithetical to development as a Christian, they're for good reasons. They're good for us. And if for no other reason, they help us learn to be patient. Mm. And patience has the end result that we're perfect, lacking in nothing. You know, not perfect in the sense that we're never going to screw it up again. Mm -hmm. Not perfect in the sense that we can somehow walk between the raindrops through life, but perfect in the sense that our perspective is right. Right. Because one of the things that helps me out the most when I'm really kind of in the thick of it all is that my savior knows what I'm going through because he's experienced it. He's experienced the same things that I've experienced. He's experienced being hated by his own. Mm -hmm. He's experienced being neglected by his own. He's experienced people betraying him. 
He's experienced people canceling him. Mm. He's experienced people saying horrible things about him that aren't true. Right. And ultimately, he's experienced being put to death because he was perfect. You know? Mm -hmm. And I just think that we need to remember those things. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It's not sinful to be grieving. That's a part of life's process. Right. I think that what all that we're suggesting is shift your perspective just one degree. Bump that steering wheel on the boat one degree. And let it let that take a little time. Mm -hmm. Do something new in 2023. Be unreasonable. Go outside your comfort zone and allow the Holy Spirit to create magic for you. And that's all we have to say about that. Thank you for tuning into another episode of the Churchosity Podcast, the show where we try to give you the Gen X take on church culture. And thank you once again, as always, to my amazing wife and phenomenal (laughs) co-host. Thank you. Be sure to follow us on all the socials. That's Facebook and Instagram. Our tag is at Churchosity Pod. Drop us a message and give us your feedback because we would really love to hear from you. And if you happen to be listening to this episode on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please give us a rating and even leave us a review. Your ratings and your reviews not only help to promote Churchosity Podcast, but they also make us a whole heck of a lot easier for everybody else to find us as well. And don't forget to spread the word about Churchosity Podcast by just simply telling a friend to tell a friend what we're doing here. Yeah, let them be a part of the conversation too. But always remember that as it says in 1 Timothy 1 verse 5, that the goal of our instruction is love. From a pure heart. And from a good conscience. And a sincere faith. So we thank each and every one of you once again for listening. And we hope to catch you all on the next episode of... Churchosity Podcast. Peace.